So four cars ready to go six laps. On the pole, it looks like it's the 101A of Greg Atwood from D-Berry, Texas. Billy Grider there into the 492. I'm going to have to wait until this other guy gets <laughs> get to me. That's Paul Lopez in the five. Paul Lopez in the number five car from Princeton, Louisiana. And the Hunter's Body Shop number 35 of JT Turner. So those four guys going to go for six laps the distance here in your first race of the night here at the legendary Boot Hill Speedway as they head off into turn number three here to the opening lap. Paul Lopez drove it almost all the way back to I-20. He'll set it up and smash the throttle off of four with the 101A of Atwood working to his inside here on the opening circuit. They'll head off into one. Lopez has the race lead. By car length off of turn number two, down the back straight of the 101A of Atwood. Going to pull to his back bumper into three, but it's not enough to take over the top spot. Off of four, sliding up off of exit, the five. Opens the door up for the 101A to walk through the threshold. He can't get the job done. Greg Atwood, better and better and better every single week. Keeps chipping away at his progression of this sport. As right now, Paul Lopez out in that brand new laser chassis. Joe Best performance, Twin City towing number 81. And a sharp looking wrap that Sean Graham with Hitman Designs put together. Off of two, down the back straight away with their sights set on turn number three. Billy Greider now going to throw his hat in the ring and become a player to the 492. The white flag is out for Paul Lopez. Princeton Paul in the turn number one and the caution flag will wave. So once again, congratulations to Princeton's Paul Lopez and the Laser Racing Chassis Twin City Towing Joe Best Motorsports, number five. Sharp looking car for Paul, made his first start out here at the event prior to the Big 10,000 win, King of the Hill. So another trophy dash, this one for the Pro Mods. I mentioned earlier this evening that uh, the Pro Mod Division has been dominated all season long by the 27 of Mike Washburn and the 4 of Doug Vick Jr. Vick Jr. with 9 wins on the year. Washburn with 5. Ben Smiley is going to find himself sitting on the pole position here along the outside of the 5A of Michael Jordan. I still think Michael Jordan's number should be 23. The 4 of Jeffrey Bechet from Sarepta, the 160 of Wild Wayne Barnes from Benton, Louisiana. We're underway. Oh, baby. Michael Jordan looking like a three-legged dog on an icy lake here early on and sets up a donut shop at the bottom of turn number two. Well, we can't make it a full circuit without a caution coming out early on in this Pro Mod Trophy Dash event, which featured the five of Michael Jordan on the outside pole, but slippery down there at the bottom of turns one and two. And he sets up an donut shop temporarily open for business. He go ahead, goes ahead and gets the car, car ironed out, and he'll rejoin this party here.
The Pro Mod Division this season, like I said, has been dominated by Doug Vick Jr. with nine victories, five for Mike Washburn. Josh Bauckham, the Benton Bullet, has a pair of victories in the number 25 car. And Robert Graham, the Sears Roofing number 22, also has a victory. Pro Mod Trophy Dash winners on the year. Ronnie Long, Glenn Keller, Matthew Thompson, and Trent Humphrey have all went to Barks, or ABC Auto Parts Victor Lane for a trophy dash. We'll find out who the new face will be in ABC Auto Parts Victor Lane here after this sixth lap affair. We're underway. Laps ago already for Jeffrey Bechet from Sarepta. Jeffrey Bechet acquired a brand new 2018 Larry Shaw chassis built by the legend Larry Shaw. And speaking of Larry Shaw, we need to keep him in our thoughts and prayers. Uh, got a prognosis yesterday, and Larry Shaw is not doing very well right now. Uh, via Drew Armstrong last night in Victor Lane in Texarkana. Certainly hope everything's okay with Larry. Checkers out for the four of Sarepta's Jeffrey Bechet, your winner of the Trophy Dash here at the Hill. Hey, let's go. I am. I was about to say IMCA Sport Mod. Limited modified race racing here at the Boot Hill Speedway tonight. On the pole. From Bossier City, Louisiana, car number 81. That'll be Kyle Ingles. How about this? A pair of Ingles that are in no, that are not related to one another. The 61-year-old veteran Ricky Ingles of the outside from Longview, Texas. The K1 of Stephen Gidry from Marksville inside of her number two. Boone Evans, the 17-year-old, in three. The number 28, the 13-year-old Shelby Hinton. As we head down the back straightaway to turn number three here on the opening lap of the racing action here at Boot Hill Speedway tonight. Since 1973, the home of the Louisiana State Dirt Track Championship on demand on RaceOnTexas.com. Heading off into turns one and two. It'll be the Wiley veteran racer Ricky Ingles who has five factory stock victories at this legendary racetrack this season. Didn't win his first one until on Saturday night, June the 9th. And he went on to win five, four more to add to his very decorated resume. Four more before August the 1st. Pretty impressive for Ingles as they try to go three wide there for a second. The Bridesmaids Honors up for bids here. Into turn number three. Working the hub and working it well. The four of Boone Evans. He slides up though off of exit. Opens up the door for, Paul, for the Paul Davis Restoration River Runs Dirt Service sponsor number K1 of Gidry. Stephen Gidry from Marksville, Louisiana. And around goes Boone Evans. Boone Evans lost the handle there. And he'll... Yeah. Well, he kept it fired for a moment, but the caution flag will wave. We won't be sending Boone to promoter school anytime soon. Outstanding race for second thus far in this limited modified heat. As the, the veteran racer, 61-year-old Ricky Ingalls jumping out front. Ricky's trying to get that limited modified program on point. As good as that factory stock deal is running right now. Ricky's liable to start cashing in on some victories here to close out this season. He's had an awesome year in that Joe Best Motorsports number 81 Twin City towing laser chassis in the factory stock rank. Solid, a solid second place finish here for the 10,000 King of the Hill at our last event. So it'll be Ricky Ingles from Longview, Texas. Driving the East Texas Holland and Rigging number 81. And IRP chassis built by his nephew Jason Ingles. The K1 on the march to the front. Multi-time winner here this year of Stephen Gidry from Marksville. And it's great to have Kyle Ingalls back in the saddle again. And a sharp-looking car. 
as he typically does have a sharp car, but Kyle Ingles, always good to see him back. He hasn't raced much at all this year. So off of four. It'll be old school versus new school to settle the score here to the final laps of this one. It'll be four in and four laps to go. Three to go when they meet the flag stand this time off of turn number four. So the Longview, Texas racer Ricky Ingles calls this racetrack his home track. The same could be said as well for Lone Star. But it's been racing here at this speed plant since he was... Since the first time he sat behind the wheel of a car. Been racing here since the late 70s. As Gidry's marching him down. He's not cutting in by car lengths, but he's, cu he's cutting in by inches and feet. But he may just run out of time. Tick-tock goes the race clock. The center of the hourglass is ticking away for the K-1 of Marksville, Louisiana's Gidry's the white flag waves. Final trip around the quarter mile racetrack here in Greenwood tonight in heat race number one, presented by r, r Timber. He'll sit on the pole position tonight of the main event. He'll be one tough customer. From Longview, Texas, Ricky Ingles gets the job done and dominates heat number one of the night here at the Hill. Second will go to the K-1 of Gidry. And third of the line, the 81 for Bozier City is Kyle Ingles. One. Maybe? Pretty sure. <laughs> Good run for the K-1 of Gidry, who finishes second. The 81 of Ingles is third. So on the pole of heat race number two for the limited modifies tonight, a multi-time winner here this year. And the JDP performance number 90 Western Flyer, that'll be Jody Davidson from West Monroe. Outside, also from West Monroe. Our most recent winner here at the racetrack. Driving the number 27, it's Chase Del Rio. Inside of two, the P. Daddy's Garage, Western Flyer, B99. It's Ben Leedy from Jonesboro. Outside, the reigning Louisiana State Dirt Track Championship winner. Driver of the Buck Ross Motorsports, Texas Fire and Safety 22 Magnum. It's Dylan Spear from Marshall. Been firing bullets, no blanks all season long for 22 Magnum. High Roller Rentals sponsored number five of Casey Penn from Shreveport. Trying to go to work on the inside of the B99 of Leedy. And at the tail there, the 99 of Mark Underwood Jr. This is a star-studded affair. Absolutely murderer's row. Any one of these guys could win a main event on any given Saturday night. Draw very, very important here. Down the back straightaway in the turn number three with a sizable advantage here on the opening first three laps of this one as he crosses underneath the stripe. West Renault, Louisiana's Jody Davidson. Jody Davidson and the Brian Craighead designs. Club 20 suspension number 90. He's on a Western Flyer chassis, a 2013 Western Flyer built by Curtis Allen, which has really showed up around the Arklatex area this season in particular. As made its way to victory lane in the form of several different drivers. There's a Western Flyer as well in second with the 27 of Del Rio, who did win the last event here the night of the King of the Hill. Chase's second win here on the season. As they head back off in the one, that battle for second seems to be the best one on the racetrack as Dylan Spear, ooh baby, flirting with disaster there. Drove the car a little bit too deep off into the corners. It's two laps to go, one and a half laps to go when Jody D meets the midpoint of the back chute. Ben Lady higher than... I'll save that. The white flag is out for Jody D. Into one. When he's not suffering uh, some bad luck, which I guess could be the case for many drivers, if old lady luck would work on their side, there'd be a lot better stories. But this guy here is always up front the Nadia Davidson takes the victory here in commanding fashion over the 27 of Chase Del Rio. Third goes to the 22 Magnum of Dylan Spear from Marshall. <whistles> Feature race winner here this year was trying to storm his way closer to the front. The 99 from Rustin is Mark Underwood Jr. A nice field of limited modified competitors here at the Hill tonight and on the pole of heat race number three presented by r, &R Timber. The $5,000 winner of the Battle of Boot Hill in the second annual event. And the Joel's Auto Sales. War Shocks by Cade Dillard Racing. The number 30 is Joel Cuvion. Outside of Cuvion, the former Louisiana State Dirt Track champ. Cliff Tupper Jr., the Harmons Automotive and Towing. Cliff's Welding Service, number 23. Patrick Hinton in car number 88. Racing Jason Ingles and the number 80 above us, Samson.
I'm up here. Um, I'm conversating with Susie Ingles. You know, I'd be corrected every now and then because I can't, you know, I can't always have these numbers on point. But you know, it, at some point, age does become a factor, and you have to always keep it in. Uh, you have to keep it in check. I want to be sure that I correct myself. Greg Ingles is not 61 yet. He'll be 61 for the next couple years. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty. Yeah, I was closer than Susie was. Not that we were both taking stabs or guessing at it, but she said he's. You know, she couldn't believe that he was that old yet. But that old is what I said. <laughs> but nonetheless, Ricky is still a flat 60. Six six decades of dominance in the tournament three. Speaking of dominance and an Ingles, it's racing Jason Ingles, his nephew, running down the number 30 Akuvion for the race lead. Both former winners of the Battle of Boot Hill. Down the back straight away. Into three, Joel Akuvion marching to the beat of his own drum right now on that Western Flyer chassis. As the white flag is out, Jason Ingles ready to pounce and strike. The former Louisiana State Dirt Track Championship winner all over the tail tank of the number 30 Akuvion down, down the back straightaway. Representing the home state of Louisiana out of Alexandria. He'll roll to the center and slide up to the top and smash the throttle and he'll take the victory. Joe Akuvion wins it over Jason Ingles in 12. Cliff Tupper going to come across the stripe and finish third in corner number 23. Well, jumping out to the early lead in this four-cylinder heat race tonight. It'll be the 199 of Michael Hudson, or Big Mike Hudson. The 14 of Chris Collier, your current point leader here at the Hill. And the Ford Focus yellow number 14. The 14 junior of Michael King Jr., the 17-year-old from El Dorado, Arkansas. Won the night of the Big 10,000 win King of the Hill event. And he started dead last, last Friday night in Texarkana and rolled his way to victory. Disposing of Justin Lishman there on the final lap. And he did the same again last night. He and Justin Converse had a well of a race. And the youngster methodically worked his way up to the point. Certainly uh, a talent I believe we'll see around the Arklatex for quite some time if he doesn't move away. But wherever he moves, he'll be a threat and a competitor if he chooses to stick with this race and stuff. We've seen many great racers come from out of the four-cylinder ranks, whether they were the mini stocks, the rear-wheel drive cars back in the early days. Duke wasn't one of them. Chad DuPont, many other great drivers began their racing careers right here in these four-cylinders. You never know who's going to be your next star of tomorrow. As right now, the youngster that's been turning a lot of heads with wins at five different tracks this year, heading off into one, it's Michael King Jr., the 17-year-old. He'll go to the inside of big Mike Hudson. Hudson slams the door shut. Michael King Jr. makes a bold move. And I don't know that you can throw a slide job in a four-cylinder, but that was as close to one, I guess, as you could do <laughs> as Hudson crossed underneath him. Oh, well, it's over, isn't it? That's why I better move my computer. Can't see the flag stand from up here. So who won that race? Appreciate your patience, folks. I'll get these drivers' names to you. Trying to tend to something real quick here.
caution flag is going to wait for debris. Oh, Debra. Living at Kevin Peace out front with the lead here in your four cylinder heat of the night. Your second one of the afternoon here. The Favel of Steve Lindsay out of Keithville. Running in a solid second. But turn number four and get this party back started. Lindsay may have something for him. We're going to get back underway here in four cylinder heat race number two of the night here at the Boot Hill Speedway. So into the history books, four-cylinder heat race number two goes as the number 11 of Kevin Peace takes the victory. The number 11. Steve Lindsay with another solid run grabbing the Bridesmaids Maze Honors and in the 6K, Adrian Kennington with a solid third place finish. On the opening lap of this heat, we, they were going three wide down the back straight away, and they're door to door for the race lead. The 10 year old went three wide and got the Walmart special disposed of two for the price of one. Toby Davis in the 21D, the drifter, moving his way up to fourth. Chad's kidding. Austin DuPont out front with the lead, the son of Chad DuPont. Austin DuPont of the number 57 out front with a lead. Ben McDuff working on the back bumper to the number 57 of Austin DuPont, the youngster for the race lead with the white flag coming out this time by. How about Toby Davis, the 10-year-old, working his way. Trying to pull even there with the number two for third, but a respectable fourth place showing here in heat race number three for the four cylinders. DuPont leaves the bottom open for Ben McDuff, but coming to the checkers, it's not enough. 57 of Austin DuPont takes the victory. So I'm going to make a correction here. Your previous heat race winner was the number 11 of James Peace. This race has the number two of Kevin Peace in the number two car, finishing in third. Kevin Peace finishes in third in this one in the number two. So James Peace won the previous one in car number 11. Grabbing second, though, the 1HC, it'll be Ben McDuff, and taking the victory, the second-generation racer 
It gets better and better every time he sits behind the wheel. The number 57 is Austin DuPont in 57. Jeremy Laxon in car number 74. Looks like the two of Jeff Rice from Vivian. That's the inside row. The 101 is Greg Atwood. It looks like Billy Grider is the outside of row number three. Cameron Furr is the outside pole sitter. Jeez. Cameron Furr on the outside pole. The 13 is Jonathan Maxwell from Spring Hill, Louisiana. Lights are out. We are underway. Side by side for second. Off of turn number four. Loose right in front of the rest of the fields. The 74 of Laxon. We've got crossways up in front of the nose of the 492. Wow. What a move by the 13 of Jonathan Maxwell. He just threw it over his shoulder for that one. In a turn number three, disposing of the youngster, the 17-year-old Cameron Fur, who's relegated back to third now. Off of four, the 13 of Spring Hills, Jonathan Maxwell. The former track champion of the old Bayou Speedway and also a track champion at IMCA Modifieds at the old Champion Park. As he sets his sights on turn number three, and we got trouble. The 74 of Laxton came around in front of the two who made contact of Jeff Rice. And Laxton's out of harm's way, and we will stay green. So the battle right now for the bridesmaids honors in this one is a good one. Jonathan Maxwell, who disposed of the youngster Cameron Fur for second. Two laps ago, Fur has now gone to work on his back bumper, trying to dispose of him and get back to that second spot. Here he comes. He'll go back to the inside for second. Maxwell bobbled, opened up the door, and at the line by half of a nose. The Gladewater, Texas youngster Cameron Fur nose the head for the second spot there. They're still side by side for second. Down the back straightaway. What a race. Looked like they may have made a little bit of contact. A little right side romance. Into turn number three and off of four. Out front on his lonesome is the 199 of Hudson. He says, we'll see y'all later. Fur and the 13 of Maxwell absolutely waging war. They're going at it. Such a major difference between finishing second or third here. It could be a couple of rows in the main event later on tonight. Obviously, the less cards you have to pass later on will make it easier work for you to perhaps get a victory in the main event as they head off into one. The top four do transfer to tonight's main event. The top four transfer. Right now, it's Billy Greider to the 492 has that transfer spot. White flag out this time by off of four at the line for the 199 of Michael Hudson. Off of turn number four, dominant fashion for the 199 of Michael Hudson. He takes the victory to the 199. Second goes to Spring Hills, 13 of Jonathan Maxwell. The one of Cameron Fur will finish third and fourth. The fourth and final transfer, the 492 of Greider. So your unofficial top four. We are taking the top four to the main event tonight, race fans. The 492 is Billy Greider. Had a strong run from the dead last starting position. Waging war there for the second spot. What a battle that was coming down to the wire. From Gladewater, the 17-year-old youngster Cameron Fur has to settle for third. Battling all the way down to the gritty end there for the 13 from, from Spring Hill, Louisiana. The Wingfield Trucking and Equipment number 13 for Jonathan Maxwell. And taking the victory in the 199, Michael Hudson scores your first factory stock heat race victory tonight here at the Hill. He is in the number 85 car. Kind of a wild start there initially. 85 came down and made a little bit of contact with the 19, but no harm, no foul. We're going to get back underway. They'll head off into one. All over the back bumper to the number 27 of Greenwalt for the race lead. Lipscomb escapes the clutches from the 18 of Young. Young will go way up top that time and nearly jump the cushion. baby. Gary Lipscomb's got himself a hot rod tonight here at the Boot Hill Speedway. He'll try to pull even the number 27 of Greenwalt here for the race lead. Oh, a little bit of slight kiss of contact there. Greenwalt definitely knows he's there. First time Josh Greenwalt's seen the racing service all season long and this new laser chassis. Josh slides up there off of exit, opens up the door. He slams the door shut. Takes the elevator from about the middle floor down to the basement there and slams the door in front of the face of the number 19 for the race lead. Lipscomb, though, about to have enough of it. 
He'll continue to go to work on the back bumper to the number 27 of Greenwalt for the race lead. And I imagine when we get down to it, he might thread the needle and make a bolder move in the waning stages of this one. Not sure there's any doubt right now. Lipscomb appears to have the best car on the racetrack, the most maneuverable car anyway. He keeps trying, but Greenwalt good enough to hold him back to second. And here comes Scott Young. He says, y'all go ahead and race for the lead. I'll go right by on the outside. Scott Young, who led the points at Boot Hill Speedway this season for 14 consecutive weeks. And unfortunately, lost that point lead coming into the King of the Hill. The worst time to lose it after having some bad luck. Finished 20th on a night where Dean Rasko finished third in the main event and knocked him out of the points lead to knock him out of having a guaranteed provisional and a starting spot for the Big 10,000 to win King of the Hill. But that was in. This is now. Greenwalt slides up off of exit, opens up the door. They're going to drag race to the line. Greenwalt wins it by half of a car length in 27. A great second factory stock heat of the night. Cliff Henry grabs the fourth and final transfer spot. The 18Y came on strong there late in the going. The Rollos Luminato. No weak links number 18 of Scott Young. Second for the Barton Glass Cook Embroidery, number 19 for Gary Lipscomb from Blanchard, Louisiana. Taking the win, he made that car wider than a triple wide trailer. Wasn't going to let anybody get to the in or outside of him. The Laser Racing Chassis, j, j Motorsports, number 27 for Josh Greenwald, your winner of Heat Race number two tonight of the Factory Stocks. Track champion and car number 68 is James Martin. Had right, a really solid run here for the King. In the Jet Racing Chassis, Rick Sis Performance, Rollos Lubinato. Number 22 from Marshall, Texas. The former Cajun Classic winner, Ronald Rollo Pilkington from Marshall. Back in the saddle again in a new car in the Hitman Designs. G25, it's Big Sexy Glenn Lindsay from Keithville, Louisiana. Glenn keeps losing weight. I'm not sure we can keep calling him Big Sexy. I'm not sure. <laughs> I think Glenn's lost 92 pounds. Pretty awesome. 96 of the Nightmare, Michael Knighton, and the Colt 45 of Dean Rasko. Alpha 4 leading the first circuit in the jet chassis, number 22, of Ronald Pilkington. Pilkington, one of the only drivers around to win multiple Crown Jewel factory stock races. Won the Armadillo Nationals, won the Cajun Classic, and he also won the Longhorn for 5,000 to win at Billy White's Timberline Speedway. As they roll off a of turn number four, it's all Rollo out front with the lead. Got himself a new wrap on that car, courtesy of Superior Racing Graphics, Eric Scott from Houghton, Louisiana. The 68 of James Martin, running in a respectable second right now. He's in the show. Dean Rasko going to work on the back bumper of the number 96 of Michael Knighton for the fourth and final transfer spot. Knighton slides up off of exit, opens up the door for Colt 45, but it's still not enough. The center of the hourglass taken away for Dean Rasko, but he's going to give it 100% here in the waning stages of this one. The 96 slid up there off the exit of two. It opened up the door again. Ew, Dean showing some respect there. A sportsman is Dean Rasko. He ain't going to get in there and just root you up out of the way. He'll race you as hard as you could be raced, but he's not going to go in there and wipe you out. As Knighton now goes to work on the number two of Garrett Lindsay, who sits third. He's in the show right now. He looks at, uh, well, I got tired of running the old tow truck. And off of four to the white flag, Lindsay's going to go to second at the flag stand. What a battle back here for second, third, fourth. Dean Rasko will throw his hat back into the ring here. And tough break for Glenn Lindsay. 
Final time off of turn number four. We know who the winner is. It's Pilkington. To the line, Garen Lindsay's going to grab second in the 96 of Knighton. And from the in-house to the outhouse in the late stages of that one, I'm not sure what happened, but the 68 of James Martin headed to the Heartbreak Hotel. That wasn't the way he wanted to end this one after running in second for the majority of this race. Y'all had Dean fourth. So coming up then grabbing the fourth and final transfer spot from Wascom, Texas, the driver of the Walker Spring and Break Architects Mechanical. The Farmhouse Retreat sponsored number Colt 45 with PTS power underneath the hood of that bootlegger chassis built by James Griffin. It's Dino, Dean Rasco, and Colt 45 from Wascom. And the Styles Automotive Dominator chassis number 96, the Nightmare. Michael Knighton grabs third, second. A solid performance there for Keithville, Louisiana's Garrett Lindsay. And taking the win from Marshall, Texas. The driver of the Rollo's Lumen Auto, Rick Sis Performance, Jet Chassis, number 22. It's Rocky for the factory stocks tonight. And the classic auto repair, number 34, Junior. The four-powered entry of Josh Daughtery from Keithville. The 43J, that's BJ Cook from Blanchard. The 12 is Bo Perry. The four, of course, that's Doug Vick Jr. on the outside pole. The 81 is Ricky Ingalls. And the five of Princeton's Paul Lopez. Two for six cars, eight laps the distance and crossing underneath down the back straight off the exit of turn number two with a head of steam is the five-time track champ up in Vivian and the nine-time pro mod winner this year of Doug Vick Jr. Vick goes to work. Paul Lopez up top for Grandpa Keeps the Good Bourbon. But Bo Perry taking advantage with the Walmart special tries to get two for the price of one he disposed of one of the five of Lopez now goes to work on the 43 J of BJ Cook and he's got it he'll take that spot the 12 working his way to the front head over to Superior Bar and Grill get you a Superior Margarita from my boy Bo Perry he'll get you fixed and served up just don't forget to tip him we all tip pretty good when we have a couple of those Superior Margaritas nonetheless off of four down the front straight away the 34 Junior of Josh Daughtery with three heat race wins on the season Trying to throw the fourth one into the history books tonight. But he'd love to pick up a heat race victory and then cash in in the main event. We'll see what he can do. Oh, boy. John. Ricky Engel's got a shot in the shorts. Uh-oh. Hard to tell now from this perspective was maybe Engel's break in there through three and four, which made the 12 of Bo Perry run up on him so quickly. Yeah, well, does he have... I imagine that he could have had a flat after the contact, but I'm thinking maybe that he lost, uh, was losing power. I'm not sure. I mean, he put his hand up there like a Let's see. The five of Paul Lopez occupies the fourth and final transfer spot here in your third factory stock heat of the night. Bo Perry having a solid run from the tail. And the Laser Racing Chassis House Car, Arm Power, Superior Bar and Grill, JJ Motorsports number 12, sets its sights on Doug Vick Jr.'s trunk lid, but it'll probably run out of time. As the white flag comes out for Keithville, Louisiana's Josh Daughtery and 34 Jr. The driver of the Jans River Restaurant. If you want some good catfish at Shreveport, Bossier, it's a pretty good place to go. The Jans River Restaurant Classic Auto Repair. The son, or the grandson of the inaugural Louisiana State Dirt Track Championship winner in 1973, a junior daughtery. It's his grandson, Josh Daughter, who takes the win here in factory stock. Heat race number three. Second goes to Doug Vick Jr. Third, we go to the 12 of Bo Perry. And fourth and final transfer goes to the five of Paul Lopez. So the quick recap, finishing the fourth spot, driving the Twin City Towing, Hitman Designs, Joe Best Performance number five for Paul Lopez from Princeton, Louisiana. He grabs the fourth and final spot. Grabbing third, driving the Superior Bar and Grill, Laser Chassis House Car, Arm Race Engine Powered, Superior Graphics number 12 of Bo Perry from Bossier City. Grabbing second, driving the Vicks Paint and Body number four, the reigning Texas State Champion at Timberline, it's Doug Vick Jr. And taking the victory in commanding fashion, the driver of the J Jans River Restaurant, Classic Auto Repair 34 Jr. for Josh Daughtery from Keithville. Water wall performance number six, the former, the 2004 Jambalaya 100 winner, that's going to be Rick Duke. He's also the 2014 PNW Sales Super Late Model Rookie of the Year. Outside of the front row, the last time he was here, he put on a show in the limited modified of the Battle of Boot Hill and the Royal Purple Synthetic Oil. Showtime signs, Ed Reinhardt trucking, number 5W of John O. Whittington from Vider, Texas. 
Inside of row number two, set a solid run here with the Comp Cam Series. In the Rocket by Litton chassis, number six, it's going to be Rocket Rob Litton, the, the only four-time Southern United Professional Racing Series late model champion. Has 32 of those victories to his credit in his career. Outside, it'll be Raymond Taylor, the longtime regular over at Chatham Raceway. And raced a lot in Glenmora at Thunder Valley over the years. Inside over number three. Always good to see him back here at the home stretch, the Tri-State Magneto. Number 57, it's bad, Chad DuPont. Began his race career right here at the Boot Hill Speedway in a mini stock in a Ford Mustang years ago. And the 2015 PNWCL Super Late Model Champion, driving the Stealth Industries, DP Motorsports. Number one, it's BJ Robinson. We'll see, he'll use some lesson learned from his father here, the great Billy Robinson. BJ should be fun to watch from the tail. Lights are out, here we go. Louisiana late model. Heat race number one of the night here at the legendary Boot Hill Speedway. They send them off into one. Whittington. Whittington went pretty hot and deep off into the corners, but man, that car is rolling. Oh, these late models are eating right now. John O. Whittington is absolutely on the on the wood. What an adrenaline rush it has to be. Oh, look out, Chad. Chad DuPont slid way up top of the exit of the corner, and I believe we'll get a caution here for the 57 of Chad DuPont. Something broke. Oh. Books here in heat race number one for the Louisiana Late Model Series. Nice to see a quality car count with the Louisiana Late Models tonight. 19 of them have checked in to do battle here at Boot Hill. So nearly a full field. Yeah. As 20 of them would typically start a main event, sometimes up to 24. So John O'Winnington, who came to Boot Hill back in 2012 when Shane Abair won his first ever race and his first start back on April the 7th of 2012. He hadn't raced a late model probably four times since that time. So we're going to go back underway here with John O'Winnington out front with the lead. John O will send her up top in that Bob Pierce chassis down the back straightaway. Here comes the Cousins doing battle, second and third. Up top, our grandpa keeps the good bourbon is the number six X of Rob Litton. And he'll screen to the outside of his cousin, the 60 of Rick Duke. The man who turned the wrenches for Litton for many, many years and route to those four times super champs. And here comes B.J. Robinson from worst to second. He'll go to the work down to the inside of him. And boy, I tell you, they are blistering that outside of the racetrack and making it look good. Utilizing a low lane and the high lane around the hill tonight as Rob Litton gets disposed of, and he goes back to fourth. B.J. Robinson going to roll the hub once again and get back on the throttle. So very tedious and meticulous is the driver to the number one. I've always said that he's one of the best to watch run the bottom of a racetrack. He's so smooth. you got to be very smooth. you got to use a lot of finesse, almost as if you put an egg underneath your right brake pedal underneath your foot. That's how you had to run this thing. Running on eggshells is the one of Robinson, but it's not enough as the driver with reckless abandon screaming up tops the 60 of Rick Duke. And I gotta, I gotta say, Rick Duke has stepped his game up to a whole another level. The last several times I've seen Rick race, he has elevated his game, that's for sure. He'll dispose of the former champion of the Super Late Model Series, B.J. Robinson, relegates him to third now. As John O. Wellington singing his own song out front, marching to the beat of his own drum. John O. is absolutely G-O-N-E, he's gone. I'm not sure that there's any other driver that wants to win a race at Boot Hill Speedway more than John O. Wellington. He's crossed underneath the checkers first. I've interviewed him in Victor Lane. But unfortunately, he didn't leave here with the cash or the check. And that was a story. That's another story for another day, I imagine. But he'll head off into one for the final time here to the number 5W. And a stellar, dominant performance. Setting his sights through three. And off of four for the final time to the checkered flag. John O. Whittington takes the victory. 60 of Rick Dude, solid in second. Third goes to the one of B.J. Robinson. That was a lot of fun. From worst to third, got up to second at one point, the driver of the Coopers Meat Packers, Stealth Industries, Oakland Shocks and Springs number one, the DP Motorsports entry for David Peterson. Trucking in the one, it'll be BJ Robinson grabbing third. Second, the former Jambalaya 100 winner in the Rocket by Litton, Jesse Waterwall performance number 60 of Rick Duke from Ball, Louisiana. And taking the win, 
and the Royal Purple Synthetic Oil. Ed Reinhardt, Showtime Signs 5W in the Bob Pierce Racing Chassis. It's John O. Whittington from Vider, Texas. Pole here. His first time ever to race a late model here at the Boot Hill Speedway. Also from Vider, Texas. In the B&D Motorsports. The B&D Motorsports number 15. It's Tracy Denby Jr. Tracy Denby Jr. on the pole at number 15. Outside, you know who it is, race fans. 531 career victories, over 300 particularly at this racetrack. The king of Boot Hill, rocking Ronnie Adams. And the Ricky Jowers Motorsports, Rocket XR1 chassis, PTS power number 11A. And the former World of Outlaws Craftsman Late Model Series regular for four years. And the PW Sales, PW Ironworks, got a race. 14M, it's Mo Bags, Morgan Bagley from Longview, Texas. It's good to see this guy here as well. From Bossier City, Louisiana, the 115, the son of Harlan Bean, the late great Harlan Bean. It's Trey Bean in 115. Robbie Stewart, a solid runner-up finish here with the Comp Cam Series of the outside of row number three in the 6R. They'll send them off into one and two for the first time tonight. Ronnie Adams. May cause an earthquake in Greenwood tonight if he can go to victory lane and heat race number one of the night. Using that top side momentum to his advantage with number 15 of Tracy Denby Jr. going to lead the first circuit of this eight-lap affair. Bobbles pushes up the racetrack, opens the door for Mo Bags. Morgan Bagley down the back straightaway. He'll dispose of the 11A of Ronnie Adams. Morgan Bagley won his first ever race here at the Boot Hill Speedway years ago, and Denby bobbled. Here comes Adams. The Adams family to the top spot at Boot Hill Speedway, ripping and roaring around the top shelf of his home racetrack. 531 career wins over 300 at this racetrack, and he is showing why right now. The 68-year-old veteran racer. Yep, 68 years old, and he's still kicking ass. Off of two, down the back straightaway. Here comes Ronnie Adams. He has got to make Ronnie feel good to get back here to race at his home racetrack every now and again and be able just to thread the needle and be on the edge of disaster the way he's running this thing right now. With reckless abandon, Ronnie Adams can still pound the cushion with the best of them. Four in and four laps to go, just like that. The blink of an hour, 50% complete of this one. The other half to go. Adams has to be careful. There's a thin line there between love and hate. You could be loving yourself one minute running the cushion. You could be hating yourself when you're jumping in a few moments if it happens. Trying to... Keep that deal on a rail as he heads off into one. Lamp traffic may become a factor in the reality here in just a matter of moments. As Morgan Bagley stalks the spoiler of the number 11A of Rockin' Ronnie Adams. The 68-year-old Wiley veteran racer. Adams disposes or tries to do a lap traffic right in front of him. Slams the door in front of his face. Oh my goodness gracious. Lap traffic is going to cost Ronnie Adams maybe the race lead. Nope, not going to happen. Ronnie says you got to get out. You got to throw something better at me now, Morgan. Morgan going to go down to his inside for the race lead. Two laps to go. Ronnie Adams through lap traffic, putting on a show at the Boot Hill Speedway. It feels like it's 1993 all over again. Ah, before the white flag waves for Ronnie Adams. Morgan Bagley. Stalks the same route that the 11A has taken. But how about it, race fans, for the final time, barring a catastrophe and it won't happen tonight. Ronnie Adams wins at Boot Hill. What do you say, Boot Hill Speedway? Give him a hand. 68 years old can still get the job done and pound the cushion with the best of them. Give him a hand, Boot Hill Speedway, for the driver of the number 11A from Diana, Texas. Ronnie Adams scores the victory in heat race number one for the Louisiana Late Models. I don't know if y'all are asleep out there or something. No. Mm. <laughs> Mars chassis built by Jimmy and Chris Mars from Menominee, Wisconsin. Outside of the Thriller, how about this? It's an old throwback to Sabine Motor Speedway and Manny. How many nights have these two, these two drivers settled the score between themselves and the open wheel modified ranks? And two good friends indeed, driving the specialty contractors Hatfield Powered Warrior Chassis number six from Natchitoches, Louisiana. It's KP, Kyle Plazant, who's gonna be a proud new father. Congratulations to Kyle Plazant. And congratulations to Callie as well. 
the Jet, Brett Frazier, going to be the Jesus Saves, ACT Industrial Process Services, Marshall Mobile Homes, Tri-State Magneto, number one. Oh, boy. Brad Couch in the number five car as we head off into one. Kyle Plazant looks to be pretty loose here on the starts, but he rockets off the exit of turn number two down the back straight with a sight set on three. The Jet Brett Frazier holds on to second and a slight drop through three and four. A slider on the nose of the six X of Plazant by the five of Brad Couch. And Plazant says sit back down on the couch. Uh, well, Brad has other plans. He'll throw the six X down to the couch. Into three. These two, these two waging war down here. Plays on. Goes to the hub that time off of turn number four. Loses sights there. Of the five. Cade Dillard. Your leader. Driving the Nichols home to court. SNS Fishing and Rentals. Joel's Auto Sales. Number 97. And that Mars race car. Down the front straightaway. That Mars car driven by Robbie Stewart. Has such a strong run here at the Comp Cams event. With a solid runner-up finish his first night out on that Mars chassis. Of course, Jimmy Mars just inducted into the National Dirt League Model Hall of Fame three weeks ago in Florence, Kentucky. And Cade has really taken like a duck to water. Oh, boy, Cade Dillard flirting with disaster. Mentioned earlier in the previous race, there's a thin line there trying to run that cushion as tight as these guys are. It's, it's tough to run the cushion and not slip over the top of it. The best way that you could describe the cushion, it's like... It's like playing the game of Mario Kart and hitting those uh, those turbo pads on the deal. You get up on that cushion, it's like hitting the NOS. Cade has to come down from the top shelf, the disposable lap traffic of the 12 machine as he heads down the back straightaway. Brett Frazier not able to reel in the number 97. Oh boy, Brett Frazier just sliding up on the lap traffic. That was a close encounter of the third kind in one. Cade Dillard, like he did the last time out here. He continues the roar to the outside, higher than Willie Nelson on a cross-country tour, and we have a caution. He's late model. He hot-lapped one a couple of times throughout the years, but said that it, it's pretty hard with these big, wide Hoosiers. So the 97 of the thriller, K. Diller, doing what he does, living up to his moniker and wowing the crowd here in the 97. Several races that he's won in Chatham this year. Of course, Dillard is the winningest driver in the short-lived Louisiana Late Model Series with the most victories on this tour with four. Cade with five total wins this season. His first ever Comp Cans victory coming at the Timberline Speedway in Corley, Texas as the white flag will come out for him. But Cade had won several of those races in Chatham, rolling that outside just like he's doing here in Greenwood tonight. Final time through turns three and four. Higher than Willie Nelson on a cross-country tour with Snoop Dogg riding shotgun again here at Boot Hill en route to victory lane. The thriller, Kate Dillard wins in 97. The five of Brad Couch will settle for second with a solid run. KP Kyle plays on third and 6X. Your unofficial top three. Driving the Hatfield Racing Depowered Specialty Contractors Warrior Chassis number 6X. It's KP Kyle plays on 6X from Natchitoches. Grabbing second from Hot Louisiana, the number 5B of Brad Couch. Brad looking pretty strong there. He and Plazon exchanging a couple of sliders early on. And taking the win, driver of the Turner Cutrite Production Jars. Kaiser Manufacturing, Nichols Home Decor, Joel's Auto Sales, SNS Fishing and Rental, Mars Race Car, Clements Racing Your Power, number 97. From Robilene, Louisiana, it's the Thriller K. Dillard in 97. Your winner of Heat Race. Jeffrey Boucher on the pole of your Pro Mod Heat here with Bubba Vines to the outside. Bubba Vines ready to cash in on one. He's been fast. Michael Jordan in the number 5A. Tommy Kent's the double zero and Ben Smiley in the eight. Five cars, eight laps. Here we go.
Mike Washburn on the pole of Heat Race, <coughs> number two for the Pro Mods. The two winningest drivers here all year long. Nine wins for the four car. Vic Jr. who goes to the inside of the 27 for the race lead. Mike Washburn with five dubs this season. And oftentimes that has a lot to do with sometimes where these guys start, but there's really not been much doubt that the four has been the class of this field so far this season. Washburn still, though, within striking distance of getting this points championship victory for the entirety of the season. Of course, Mike Washburn did win the 2012 Open Wheel Modified Track Championship here at Boot Hill. Got $2,000 for his efforts as well on behalf of the USRA, United States Racing Association. That season, of course, Tater Hyde, Dustin Tater Hyde, was the mid-season points champion. Mike Washburn and the Architect Sheet Mill and Welding McDonald's sponsored Pizza Rev number 27. Comfortably out front with the lead here over the nine-time winner Doug Vick Jr. from Vivian, Louisiana, the four. The 515 of Trent Humphrey and the, and the Humphrey Motorsports Pizza, or Johnny's Pizza. Greg Tilly's Mobile Homes number 515. trip for Mike Washburn out of Shreveport in car number 27. He is gone. Now Trent Humphrey goes to work to the inside of Vic Jr. Would never count out Vic Jr. You better not count your chickens tonight. He'll be a factor to the main event as Mike Washburn takes this one in commanding fashion. Humphrey steals it away from the 4V to grab second. So I'd say the three studs in this class and probably the guy who hasn't had the finishes to show for how strong he's been all year is the 515 who ended up grabbing second away from the 4V of Doug Vick Jr. That's Trent Humphrey in the Greg Tilly's Mobile Homes. Johnny's Pizza sponsor, number 515 Humphrey Racing Entry. Trent's uh, knocking on the door to the victory lane. Shouldn't, shouldn't be too long, and I think he'll work his way to ABC Auto Parts victory lane. He comes up one spot short, though, to the driver who dominates this one in the Arklatex Sheet Mill and Wedding Pizza Rev sponsored McDonald's number 27 of Mike Washburn trying to get a six double. On the pull of Pro Mod Heat Race. It's, it's the Benton Bullet Josh Bockham in car number 325. Michael Shaw in the nine, the General Giant Jason Beasley. Wild Wayne Barnes in the 160. He's out of Benton, Louisiana. Four laps to go for Josh Bauckham from Benton, Louisiana. Jason Beasley trying to hunt him down.
it. So our final heat race of the night. <clears throat> Into the Boot Hill Speedway history books and your winner of Promont Heat Race. Number three is going to be the 325 from Benton, Louisiana of Josh Buckham. The 16 of the general giant, Jason Beasley. Come across the stripe in the Jays long care. Number 16 in second. And the 160 for Benton is Wayne Barnes. To the outside of Atwood tonight. It'll be the 55 of Jake Gentry. Hey, not every, I usually try not to. Three one nine eight. Final final call for three one nine eight. The final number three one nine eight is the B main for the factory stocks. Get ready to drop the hammer. We're underway. So Glenn Lindsay and the Hitman Designs G25 got a lead. 43J of BJ Cook, the 68 of James Martin, Jake Gentry in the 55, the two of Jeff Rice from Vivian Louisiana, Randy Robinson's in the B95, the Hunter Body Shop 35 is JT Turner. And Jeremy Laxon in car number 74 will get the party back started here off of turn number four. I'm still looking for 3198 for the final prize down here and I drew one more number if we don't get that one claimed. Back on the way on demand on raceontexas.com. Sliding up out of the grooves the 101 of Atwood. They go three wide for a second down the back straight away. And Atwood gonna fight back to the outside in the three and four to the 68 of James Martin. Look at this. B.J. Cook going to take over the race lead. He'll send it off in a one and two. Here comes James Martin down to the inside for the race lead. They hit off a two down the back straightaway. James Martin going to nose ahead for the top spot in the turn number three. The 68 rolling around the middle part of the Boot Hill Speedway. B.J. equally as tough up top. B.J. Cook tries to cross underneath the 68. They make a little bit of contact. Here comes Atwood. Atwood going to try back there to the inside for the race lead. Atwood working the hub and working it well. Martin fights back to the outside in an outstanding B-Main event. Oh, baby, they make a little bit of contact there. What a B-Main we have. I wish all B-Mains were this good. The 101 of Atwood still continues to roll the hub and roll it well off of turn number four. The 68 of James Martin still continues to roll the outside. We're 50% complete. Laxton coming around right in front of the field. No harm, no foul, we'll stay green. Laps to go for the 68 of James Martin. One and a half laps to go when he meets the midpoint of the back straightaway. BJ Cook gonna try to make something happen here with the white flag coming out this time by.
Final trip down the back straightaway to turn number three for the final time. He rides out of Wascom, Texas. Your winner of B Main tonight for the Factory Sox goes to the 68 of James Martin. I believe we took the top four to the main event. Don't quote me. But your winner, driver of the car number 68, formerly from Thibodeau, Louisiana, the 2014 track champion. And the car number 68, it'll be James Martin, your winner of the B Main tonight. I got a. From Longview, Texas, a six year old veteran racer, Ricky Ingalls. The 90. And the Western Flyer chassis. With best engines underneath the hood, it's Jody Davidson from West Monroe. Inside of the second row, the second annual $5,000 winner of the Battle of Boot Hill, it's Joel Cuvion from Alexandria. Marksville, Louisiana, Stephen Guidry in the Express Chassis, number K1. West Monroe, Louisiana's car number 27 of Chase Del Rio, the 12 of Racing, Jason Ingalls. 20 laps the distance, should be a good one. We are underway in your first A-Main of the night here at the Boot Hill Speedway. On demand on RaceOnTexas.com. Heading into one for the first time here tonight. Oh, and Davidson lost it in front of the field, and Ben Leedy and the 28 of Hinton involved in one down here in one. And we'll get a caution early for an original restart coming to you. So an original restart coming to you, race fans. The number 81 of Uncle Ricky Ingalls from Longview, Texas, on the pole with the 90 of Jody D. The 30 of Joel Cuvion, the K1 of Stephen Gidry from Marksville. West Monroe's Chase Del Rio in 27, Rakes and Jason Ingles outside of three. Inside of four is Kyle Ingles from Bozier City in the number 81. Dylan Spear from Marshall, the reigning Louisiana State champion. Cliff Tupper Jr. Mark Underwood Jr. The lights are out. We're underway at the Boot Hill Speedway in your limited modified main event. Hustling off into one. Way up top that time in the 90, trying to find some bite. And some dig down the back straightaway, not going to be enough to pull even with the 81 on the opening circuit. Hammer in the cushion. Off of four. Here comes Davidson to the back tilt tank of the number 81 for the race lead. Coming up just a little bit short there. Man, I'm telling you what, this racetrack is wide right now, Clyde. Down the back straightaway, using every single inch of it. Oh boy, the 90 of Davidson jumped the cushion just a little bit, but as the 81 slammed the door shut there in front of his face and said, Get off of my porch. Uh-oh, we have one going over the top of the hill in one and two. Hard to tell from this vantage point who that driver may be, but we will get caution. Great. They didn't give everybody, like, if you wanted to have your opinion, you needed to go in there and register for it and go through a bunch of different... Missile. What a racetrack we have here tonight, folks. Oh, and Chase Del Rio just sent sparks up into the sky here in Greenwood. And taking over the lead, the 90 in the Western Flyer Chassis 2013 edition. Built by Curtis Allen is going to be the 90 from West Monroe with Jody Davidson. Davidson, who won a main event here earlier this season, actually the second event of the season from 12th. And the number 90, and here comes 81 with a run. Ricky Ingalls, 60 years old. Oh, boy. Hit that wall of a cushion. Boy, well, sprint car drivers would certainly love the race on this place right now. Speaking of, sprint cars will be here next Saturday night. The Elite Knot and Wing Sprinters will be back here for the third time since 1977 at the Boot Hill Speedway. Paul White, the former USAC national champion, won the most recent one here at the Speed Plant. Should be outstanding next weekend. 
into three and rolling off a of turn number four. Here comes Kuvion now going to work to the inside of the number 81 of Ingles for second. Ingles continues to set his sights and cross hairs to the back of the deck lid of the Nani of Davidson for the race lead. Jason Ingles flirting with disaster way up top high side hustling as well as the K1 of Guidry who happens to roll the hub here in the three and four but we've got a racetrack tonight. Right here in the dog days of summer on a hot night in August. Ricky Ingles driving the number 81 IRP chassis with reckless abandon. He'll go up, grab some cushions, smash the loud pedal, and try to pull the number 90 to him. Ingles rolling like a yo-yo with no string up top. Can Ricky Ingles, outside line momentum, pay dividends for him? He's having to drive his car so much harder into the corners while the 90 is able to keep him at bay. Just kind of smoothly rolling the hub of the racetrack right now. Jason Ingles continues to roll the outside as well. He's back there in fifth in car number 12. Everybody tucked around the hub of the racetrack. There for a few moments, it seemed like, well, Ricky Ingles, he'll once again, he'll be the lone voice in the wilderness. He'll, he'll go back to the top side, but he'll bring the 30 with him. Kuvion now going up top. If the 81's going to get there, he's going to need some help sweeping that top line off and cleaning it off just a little bit. All against the race clock now. I often say they better go, they gotta go, and they better go now. As Jason Ingles back here for the four spot, contesting the K1 of Gidry for it. All the while, once again, back up front. The 81 of Ingles trying to find every single inch around the racetrack and garner as much steam and momentum around the speed plan as he can get. To hopefully thrust by the number 90 of Davidson. Jody's so, so tough tonight. Right around the bottom of the racetrack. Into turn number three. Rolling off of four. Here comes Ingles now. Ingles has got to run. Into turn number one. Lap traffic may become a factor in reality. Right in front of your leaders at 81. Come on, man. Damn. Of course, you do get lane. You do get lane choice. On the restart as the second place driver as it's a Delaware double file restart. Yeah, the leader goes out front, the driver in second gets to pick and choose which lane. As Ingles elects to take the outside lane and why wouldn't he? He was rolling and reeling in the number 90 of Davidson for the race lead just as the caution flag wave for the 88 of Hinton. And they got three white for second here momentarily on the restart. Wow. Ricky Ingles. What a racetrack we have here. Tim Higgins has once again prepared a beautiful racetrack here on another beautiful dirt track, Saturday night in Greenwood, Louisiana, the oldest dirt oval, or the oldest operating dirt oval in the state of Louisiana since 1973. Ingles has got it working well now. He'll send it back up top and get the RPMs wound up just at the right nick of time here in the late going. One and a half laps to go in to meet the midpoint of the back straightaway. And here comes Ricky. He's got nephew Jason riding back in third, but Uncle Ricky out front, the 60-year-old veteran racer out of Longview, Texas. Five-time winner this season. Oh, and he drove it deep off into the corner, but he grabbed some cushion, smashed the throttle, trying to dethrone Jody Davidson tonight here at the Boot Hill Speedway. Davidson trying to get his third win of the year in his first in four months. Off of two down the back straightaway for the final time as they set their sights on turn number three. Tonight, he'll roll off at turn number four to a face full of checkered flag. Jody Davidson represents his hometown of Western Louisiana and scores a popular victory here at Boot Hill. Oh, 
We'll head down and get a post-race interview here with your winner, Jody Davidson. He drove a flawless race tonight. Getting ready to climb out of that Western Flyer chassis with a best engine underneath the hood. His third win here this season, race fans climbing out. Give it up for Jody Davidson from West Monroe, Louisiana in 90. His first win here since the fourth week of the season when he started 12th and he won the main event. He's so fast, he beat me to victory lane. Jody. Man, it was it was absolutely murderer's row tonight. Man, let's walk so we get here in the race on Texas cameras. Uh, you really, really uh, turned up the wick tonight. Ingles really tried to show you something there on the outside, and sure, when you felt pressure there, you just kept rolling that bottom. Car was really hooked tonight. Yeah, it was good. I went out, and luckily, Joel was there to save me, so I'm thankful for him. How good does this feel, man? You started off the season white hot. You won a couple here. You won one from 12th. Just told the race fans about that. You've had a fast car all year, man, but not if, you know, I guess everybody had good luck. It'd all be a good night, but you've had some really bad luck here the last couple of months. Oh, it's been horrible. Yeah. Absolutely horrible. I mean, it's got to make these, you know, you're going through all that tough times, those adversity. It definitely makes it uh, feel better when you do cash in. It's about time. We, we've run good, but had bad luck. Parts breaking, $5 parts. Cost us a lot of money. Uh, you feel pretty good about the factory stock deal. You still going to continue to do that when you can? Yeah, yeah we we were going to bring it tonight, but wanted an easy night. We need to leave it at home. How hard is that to balance two race programs on the same night to be competitive? It's tough. Ricky does. We, we try to do it, so it's fun. that factory's fun. Man, let's hear about all the folks that help you out in the race car real quick, man. Um, Tommy Trawick, my mom, dad, they, they keep me in good stuff, so Jody Prince, J&J. Neil Kemp at Club 20, he's he's helped us a lot, and you know Scott Swanner's there for me to annoy, so it's all good. Congratulations, man. Well deserved. Thank you. Give it up for him, folks from West Monroe, Louisiana. Jody Davis, and get your limited modified victory tonight to kick off the main events. Great time. Great old Arkansas looking for his fourth consecutive victory between three different racetracks tonight. Driving the number 14 junior, it's Michael King Jr., 17-year-old. Outside, it'll be James Peace, driving cart number 11. Inside of two, the son of Chad DuPont. It's Austin DuPont, car number 57 to the inside of her number two. The 199 is big Mike Hudson. Mike Hudson to the 199. Inside of three from Keithville is the 5 of Steve Lindsay. To the outside is the 1HC of Ben McDuff. Inside of four, the 10-year-old, I'm sorry, that's Kevin Peace in the two. The 14 is Chris Collier. He's the current Boot Hill CBA four-cylinder point leader. He's got three wins on the season in car number 14. Adrian Kennington in the six in the six K, ten years old in car number twenty one D. The drifter Toby Davis from Rodessa, Louisiana. Lordy. So it should be 15 laps of distance. The 17-year-old Michael King Jr. going to set the pace and drop the hammer and get us underway in this main event for the four cylinders. For this race, when I go down for the post-race interview. And we'll consolidate that there, and we'll make sure we get to get this to you. So original restart for the four cylinders. We're going to get underway off of four. Here we go.
17-year-old racer Michael King Jr. trying to get his fourth straight victory. I mentioned earlier, came from dead last to win on the final turn of the final lap last Friday night in Texarkana. He won again last night in Texarkana. Had a head-to-head -head bout with Justin Converse. And we are back underway into one. As they head off a two with their sights set on turn number three down the back straightaway. It was 60 laps in. I meant to mention that earlier. Shannon Babb, the Moequa missile, was leading the Dirt Million. It pays $202,000 to win tonight. Almost $203,000. At 202, $980. Bucks. Pretty good. It uh, was $3,900 just to start. Pearson Jr. I know that we're four cylinder racing, but how about it for Shreveport, Louisiana's car owner Ronnie Stuckey and the Black Diamond House Car scoring the big Eldora Million victory in Mansfield tonight. That is so awesome. Bobby Pierce challenged late, but right here in four cylinders tonight at Boot Hill, it's Michael King Jr. out front with the lead. I may sound silly saying this, but you never know. You know, I was just mentioning the Eldora Million and guys like Earl Pearson. You never know where the stars of tomorrow may come from. This kid out front right now, I've been saying it all year long. He's talented. And who knows? Who Who's to say that he's not a future Dirt Lake Model Hall of Famer or something? He has been impressive in a four-cylinder all season long. The young man born in Kentucky moved here a year ago. And didn't really start turning up the wick until he found some confidence when he beat Justin Converse in a heat race at Arkle Tech Speedway for the Factory Stock 50. And that has propelled him to dominating the second half of this racing season. With his sights set on the checkered flag, he'll get a face full of them from flagman Keith Parker. El Dorado, Arkansas, 17-year-old Michael King Jr. scores the four-cylinder win tonight here at Boot Hill. I don't know if y'all heard me, but uh, Earl Pearson Jr. just won the Dirt Million at Mansfield for Ronnie, Ronnie and Terry Stuckey at a Shreveport, Louisiana, the Black Diamond house car. That is pretty dang cool. EPJ settled the score late with Bobby Pierce. But Earl Pearson won the B main and the A main tonight. Give it up, though, for this fella, 17-year-old from El Dorado, Arkansas, Michael King Jr., your winner. Let Michael get the uh, safety apparel off here. We'll get a quick word with him. Won the night of the King of the Hill. One last night at Texarkana, one of the previous race at Texarkana. This four, get over here for the race on Texas cameras for me, Michael. Is this four or five straight? This is five straight. Five straight. We talked last night at Texarkana that at one point in the year, man, you just you just hit this uh, this this deal in your racing career where you felt confident coming to the racetrack where you could compete. Man, ever since then, I mean, once you turn that wick up, it's it's been tough for the rest of these competitors out here, man. Well, what what's the what's the method to the madness? You know, once you get confidence in yourself as a driver, you can go out there and drive harder and drive less stupid. You know, as a rookie, you do stupid things all the time. But, uh, you know, once I once I hit that stride and I won that uh, race at Vivian, like I told you last night, it, uh, it put a lot of confidence in me to go out there and, you know, compete with these fast guys and 
come out here and win again is awesome. I love this track. Well, I mean, that's got to mean something to you, though, to elevate yourself where now these guys are coming out here. You're the hunted now. Yeah, it feels kind of weird, you know. Like I said, I went into the year with, like, just a little expectation. You know, I would like to win one race, but now I'm up to nine and five in a row, and it's, it, it's kind of overwhelming. You had dreams as a young kid of uh, one day having an opportunity to race, didn't you? I, uh, I watched my dad race around a dirt track for years, and uh, I was a big NASCAR fan. And, you know, my dream is to either race in Lucas Oil or to drive in uh, NASCAR. So I'm hoping I can do that. Lucas Oil late models? Yes, sir. Pretty cool. Hey, Earl Pearson Jr. just won the Dirt Million uh, tonight. I don't know if you pay attention to that. So that was pretty cool. He won for Shreveport Carl and Ronnie Stuckey. Did, uh, did, where did Bobby Pierce finish? Anybody know? Second. Second? <laughs> yeah. Man, come on. That's my guy. He's my guy, too. He's a pretty good kid. Hey, uh, let's hear about all the folks that help you out in the race car. And real quick, how did that limited feel? You got the hot lap unlimited modified for BJ Moore last night. How'd that feel to you? It felt awesome, man. You know, I've, I've been dreaming of race, driving a modified since I was little, and uh, to go out there and to hot lap one, you know, I didn't push it like I was in a race. I just getting a feel for it, but it, uh, it felt really, really good. Let's hear about the folks that help you out. Uh, first, I got to thank the good Lord for giving me this opportunity. Got to thank all the awesome fans for coming out here it'd be kind of pointless for me to go in a circle without them here uh i gotta thank mom and dad uh, hartman walsh ppg the iron temple gym and uh the track for putting this stuff on keep chipping away at those dreams man you're gonna achieve them good job tonight thank you appreciate you man give it up for him folks michael king jr scores the victory tonight in the four cylinders your factory stock main event will look like this on the pole it'll be michael hudson the 27 of josh greenwald Man, would it be a big night for him and a feather in the cap if he could win on the first night out in this brand new laser ch laser chassis to him. Inside of row number two, the 22, the jet chassis entry from Marshall. It'll be Ronald Rollo Pilkington. The classic auto repair Jan's River restaurant sponsor, 34 junior Ford power and entry of Josh Daughtery from Keithville. 13 from Spring Hill, Louisiana, the Wingfield truck and equipment number 13 of Jonathan Maxwell. The best starting position in a main event in a couple of months for the 19 of Gary Lipscomb. We're going to go at it for 20 laps of distance. Should be an outstanding race. The factory stocks always put on a show. An on-demand on race on Texas. We're underway. I want to kindly thank Stephanie Odom for stepping up and uh, filming for us tonight. We got a log jam down the back straightaway. Oh, look out. To the infield and the bad luck biscuit strikes again for the 19 of Gary Lipscomb. And a beautiful car of the five of Lopez is around facing the wrong direction. I think uh, I think the Beasley family may may think that I was gonna forget about them down here. Can't do it. <laughs> Just to be sure they heard. Happy birthday, three years old, to Nolan Beasley on Monday. No, it gets hard to hear down there. So we're gonna go to original restart once again with Mike Hudson on the pole position here with the 27 of Josh Greenwald to the outside, Ronald Pilkington and Daughtery in row two. Maxwell and Vic Jr. in row three were underway. Hustling and heading off uh, turn number two for the first time tonight. We'll stay clean and green off of turn number four, leaning on each other back here a little bit as Ronald Pookington disposes of the 27 of green want your outside pole sitter. He'll punch the time clock, and now he'll go to work and try to pull even or to the back bumper to the 199 of Hudson for the race lead. Wow, Rollo just drove it deep off into the corner, waited until he about got to I-20 before he set the car up to turn left. He'll head down the front boulevard into turn number one. Oh, my goodness, Heartbreak Hotel straight to Elvis Presley Boulevard for the car number 27 in that brand-new laser chassis tonight for Joshua Greenwald. Hales Bales. We're back underway. Here comes Josh Daughtery. The son. Uh, the... The grandson of the inaugural Louisiana State Dirt Track champion of Junior Daughtery, Josh Daughtery, work in there, but here comes Ronald Pilkington. A Crown Jewel factory stock winner three times in his career. Cajun Classic in 2008, I'm sorry, 2009. Won the Armadillo Nationals at Sam and Lisa Haverty's Lone Star Speedway in 2013. And won the Longhorn Classic in 2014 at Billy White's Timberline Speedway. And he's going to roll to the outside of the number 199 of Hudson to take over the race lead and drop down to the low side in front of him. 
and try to protect that top spot off of two as he opens up that low line for the taking for the 199, but he can't get the job done. A stellar run to this point for the 34 junior of Josh Daughtery. It's a, oh, right in front of the field, look out. Ugh. A nice job for Randy Robertson to avoid con. Goodness. 22 machine, the Marshall Texan. Heading and sending off back in the turn number one and hitting off a two down the back straight away. Does Josh Daughtery have anything tonight for Ronald Pilkington? Halfway in. So the first half into the history books, the second half to come. I don't know that there's a driver in the main event here that would like a victory any more than the driver sitting in the second spot that is trying to hunt down the tail tank of the 22 of Pilkington, the Josh Daughtery. The battle back here for third is a good one. As they head down the front boulevard in the number one, Doug Vick Jr. Holding back the advances of the number 12 of Bo Perry, who's all over his tail tank, the 199, flanked to his inside. And to turn number three, they continue to wage war. As Dean Rasko will throw his hat into the ring and become a player. As Pilkington is stretching it out up front, but the battle right here for third is a good one. Down the front straight away, they come again into one. Michael Hudson in the middle of that battle. As Rasko trying to fit it down to his inside there of the 199 at Colt 45. Bo Perry all over the tail tank about to burn his eyebrows from driving nearly underneath the fuel cell of the four car. Vic Jr. Well, if this was the battle for the race win or the lead right now, I'm not sure it could be any better. As off of four, Duke Vic Jr. may not have the quickest car of the bunch right here. But he is holding them back, that's for sure. And somebody just may, either Hudson or the 12 of Perry, may run out of patience. But I think they all know that Doug Vick would race them very cleanly. And threaten the issue here. Could maybe come back to bite you in the rear end later on. I mean, what an absolute battle that is. And a turn three, Hudson. Still cannot get out of the clutches of the four car, but Doug Vick still 
stuck and tough right there to the middle lane of the racetrack. Giving up that bottom is Vic. He slides up there to the middle part, allows the 199 to race to his inside down the back straightaway. Michael Hudson going to nose ahead in the tournament three for that third position as Pilkington is still dominating out front with the 34 junior in second. Off of four. What a battle for third. Dean Rasco still has his nose into the mix as well as the 12 of Bo Perry. Doug Vick Jr. fighting back to the outside. He's not just going to pull over. His hot rod equally as good as all these guys as they roll off of four as Pilkington is already exiting turn number two right now as well as Josh Daughtery. The battle for third, duly noted, couldn't be much better. As the white flag is out for Rollo. His first win of the year here, Boudreaux goes to Ronald Rollo Pilkington. Away and <laughs> a stellar performance tonight as well for the driver of the Jans River Restaurant Classic Auto Repair 34 Junior of Josh Daughtery, who came home in a solid second and 34 Junior, his best run of the season. As the driver of this Rollo's Limonado Rick this performance, Jet Chassis number 22 out of Marshall, ready to climb out of the cockpit. Just be sure to give him a hand, Boot Hill. He's Climbing out now, it's Ronald Rollo Pilkington from Marshall, Texas in 22, your winner tonight. Rollo, this thing was absolutely stuck, man. Uh, this jet chassis seems to be on kill all season long. You've ran into a little bit of bad luck, a little humps in the road along the way, but man, it's been a really good car and definitely cashed in tonight. Yeah, it's actually been a real good car. We, uh, we battled brake issues there for a little while and we finally found it ever, ever since. Uh, you just felt really good right there to the middle of the bottom line. I mean, you weren't going to change up anything unless somebody showed you that outside. No, that's what I was telling Ricky. Uh, you know, once I got in the groove and started getting on the right front through the corner, I was like, man, I could have flat footed, it, you know. Especially at the win at this racetrack. I know it's been a little while since you've won here. I mean, you've won here in Amah, you've won here in Limited, you've won here in everything. It's, uh, it's got to be pretty special always to win at this racetrack. Oh, yeah. It's very special tonight. My mom's here. She's over here watching. I got some friends over here. I got little Hannigan with me tonight. He's my future driver. He's your future. Oh, okay. Yeah, my future driver. Crow here helping me. Uh, and, you know, it's nice. Ricky Burke and uh, Tim, they, they give us an awesome tractor to race on the weekend and weekend out. And that's a lot of hard work. Did you, did you I won't say heartbreak, but were you a little disappointed after the King of the Hill, as good as this car was in the qualifiers and everything leading up to that? I mean, you still had a solid run, but it didn't end the way you wanted it to. No, it was disappointing. That's when uh, I finally found my brake issue. Uh, I changed everything but what I found. And uh, it started acting up on me, and you know, there's nothing you can do with no brakes. How often do your folks come out here to the track? Uh, my mom, this is her second time this year. Uh, maybe this will make she'll come over. I think my mom's went once since 1993, so I was just curious. Man, let's hear about everybody additional that helps you out in this race car, Rollo. Uh, Crow, Chris Hannigan, Rick Sears, uh, Jody Prince at J&J, &J, uh, Rollo's. Uh, uh, double deuce jerky, and uh, that's about it. You try some of that jerky. Apparently, Crow's got that got that good recipe. And he got the recipe down. I promise. Congratulations, Rado. Well deserved. Well earned win tonight, man. You dominated it. Uh, thank you very much, Zach. Give it up for him. Ronald Pilkington from Marshall gets his first factory stock win of the season here at Boot Hill tonight. Side. There's going to be an earthquake in Greenwood, Louisiana tonight if the 11A of Ronnie Adams can score this victory. Don't count him out, race fans. The lights are going to go out for 35 laps to distance. The Louisiana Lake Model Series is underway here from the Boot Hill Speedway. Ronnie swing way high, wide, and handsome on the start. Oh, my goodness. Ronnie got a wild start on the front straightaway. Got, uh-oh. So Ronnie will get a shot at redemption. Going to go out. The cake's been baked, and it'll be up to John O'Winnington to light the candles off of turn number four and get this party restarted. John O'Winnington from Vitor, Texas, on the mat, on the restart. We're back underway. Back underway, heading off into one. A much better restart this time for Ronnie Adams down the back straightaway. Ronnie Adams going to lead by half a cat's whisker at Boot Hill. 
the place where he was born and raised off a of turn number four to lead lap number one at the Boot Hill Speedway. It's going to go to the king of Boot Hill, Ronnie Adams. 531 career wins for the driver out front, leading by half of the nose over the 5W. John O'Winnington down the back straightaway. Can Ronnie Adams win one here at the home stretch tonight? What a popular victory it would be as he goes way up top where Grandpa keeps the good bourbon that time. He finds some cushion and he smashes the lap and old John O'Winnington leads lap two. Two lead changes already and here comes Mo Bags. He'll flirt with his aster and throw his hat into the ring and become a player here. Down the back straightaway, Mo Bags up the third. And they send him off into three and four. Ronnie Adams contesting once again that outside line and drag race into the line. Yeah, baby. Three laps, three different leaders. Early change on the first three laps anyway. And they're three wide for the race lead. Off a tee down the back straightaway. Jono working the hub and working it well now. Working back. We're going to go three wide for the race lead. Off a turn number four. They're going to go three wide and continue to do it down the front straightaway. Ronnie Adams going to continue to hold on to it. What a hell of a race we have brewing at Boot Hill Speedway tonight in your Louisiana Lake Model Main event. Down the back straightaway, just a matter of time for the thriller. Kay Dillard lives up to his moniker and starts thrilling and rolling his way to this trio. Off of four, they continue to roll three different lanes wide, and Ronnie Adams by half of Cat's Whisker still continues the lead as Mo Bags is officially a contender and a player tonight. Down the back straightaway, Mo Bags. Rolling right here to the hub of the racetrack. Couldn't go on any lower than a mud cat in the Red River that time. Off a turn number four, it's going to pay dividends for him as he'll take over the top spot from the 11A of Ronnie Adams. Ronnie Adams has to hold serve with an outside line and he'll smash the throttle and hit the turbo boosters down the back straight. He'll even the way with the 14M and actually know the head by half. But Carly, that Rocket XR1, Luigi's Restaurants, 11A car. What a hell of a race we have brewing so far early on. Lake Models living up to the moniker tonight. They're living up to the billing, if you will. And look at Ronnie Adams. Holy smokes. It looks like he just uh, got the star on a game of Mario Kart. He is on fire, heading off into turn number one. And he keeps rolling this racetrack with reckless abandon and relegating the advances of all these guys behind him. They very well may need to grab a red turtle shell and shoot his tires out. I'm not sure, but off of four. Enough of the silly stuff. Down the front straight away. Ronnie Adams receiving pressure now as lap traffic is going to become a factory in reality here. As Adams swings wide there off the two. Down the back straight away on the throttle. To the outside on the 14 with Morgan Bagley. Morgan Bagley, one of the best regional late model drivers. Began his race career in open world modifieds. Back in 2005, of course, he was a open world modified track champion at the Lone Star Speedway in Gilgore, Texas. Began late model racing back in 2010. And of course, won the PNW Cell Southern Professional Racing Series Late Model Chase as a rookie on the tour. And Timothy Culp was that year as well. They both finished one and two in the points. And from 2012 all the way to 2016 or 2017, Morgan Bagley raced up and down the roads of the World of Outlaws Craftsman Late Model Series. Tonight, you got the Wiley Veteran Racer with over 500 or 531 career victories, over 300, particularly at this racetrack, who's holding back the advances of one of the best regional standouts in a national touring series racing for quite some time in the form of Morgan Bagley. Bagley's been able to hold back the 5W of Whittington who rides in third as lap champions for coming in front of your leader. As the 97 of the thriller, Kate Diller, the winningest driver on the tour in this short-lived tour. What a race Ronnie Adams is driving tonight, folks. 68 years young. Down the back straightaway in the turn number three. In 2010, we had a Hall of Fame induction and it was Ronnie Adams who was able to score the title to be the king of the Boot Hill Speedway. Doug Ingalls, Tom Michaels, many of the greats all contested and said that, yep, he deserved it and he was the man. There's been many race fans that have showed up on many dirt track Saturday nights in hopes to see this 11A car or the 1A. Go back to ABC Auto Parts Victor Lane here at the home racetrack. Tonight, they may get their wish. Very well could be an earthquake here in Greenwood if he's able to hold on and get this victory. Ronnie Adams showing how much he wants it tonight. traffic will become a major factor and the reality is 115 to Trey Bean will be the next car to get disposed of by the 11A of Roddy Adams flawlessly executing right now 
It feels like it may be 1983 all over again. The adaptability of this driver when technology and suspension and everything on these cars has come so far. Everything is so technologically advanced here in this day and age of racing. In times where Ronnie Adams could go to the Back to the task at hand. Ronnie Adams continues to carve like a knife, carve like a knife through butter through lap traffic. From the many years where he had to go to a junkyard and pick up parts and not spin an arm and a leg on these race cars. He's had to work through the times when technology has more or less taken over the sport and he's had to adapt. And nothing more impressive than what he is doing here tonight. And his most recent late model victory in a touring series sanctioned the body came with the battle or I-30 Speedway. Tracy plays I-30 Speedway in Little Rock two years ago with the Comp Team Super Dirt Series. Adams has separated himself now by nearly a, ha a whole straightaway as John O'Whittington has taken over the second spot from the 14 of Morgan Bagley. Whittington has rose his way to second. Cade Dillard still way up top that time in the 97. He's riding back in the fourth spot behind the 14 of Bagley. Lap traffic. For the 5W of Whittington. He knows he's got to go and he's got to go now. The center of the hourglass is taken away as Ronnie Adams looking to get a very popular victory tonight here at his home racetrack. What hasn't he won in? He used to race here week in and week out with the likes of Doug Ingalls, Gary Wright. He's a National Sprint Car Hall of Famer. Ingalls, a National Dirt Lake Model Hall of Famer. Five laps to go for the king of Boot Hill, Ronnie Adams. There's one here in Wing Modified, the old coupe cars. Oh man, Ronnie just slowed down big time. Did he lose a tire? I think Ronnie just lost the tire. I think Ronnie may have just burned it one. Nope, I'm wrong. Oh, look out, Ronnie Adams. Ronnie Adams gets into the lap traffic. Working down to it. Working down to it. Off of four. Down the front straight away we go. What an absolute dominant and a stellar run tonight. Two laps to go. He'll head down the back straightaway, this time by to the white flag. Getting ready to receive a very popular victory as he'll see the one lap to go sign this time. He's gonna do it, race fans. I believe he's gonna do it, barring a catastrophe, but catastrophe or a mechanical failure. The driver that'll score his 532nd victory tonight, race fans. How about it for the driver, the king of Boot Hill, Ronnie Adams gets the victory tonight here at Boot Hill Speedway. <laughs> Woo! How about that, Boot Hill? Very well accomplished racer, Kay Dillard, who's dominated this year and one of the most popular victories here at the legendary racetrack. We'll go to the driver who's been racing here since the doors open. Back when it was built by Dual Wise in 1973, celebrating his 50th year of racing. John the Luigi's Restaurants, 11A car for Ricky Jowers Motorsports tonight. And a Bob Pierce chassis tonight. Interesting because the 5W of Whittington also was in a Pierce tonight. So in the Pierce chassis, mentioned earlier, Bobby Pierce scored the runner-up finish of the night in the Eldora Dirt Million. <laughs> Said, folks, he's getting ready to climb out of the car. I imagine he's pretty worn out after that one. 35 laps around this joint, up on the wheel, white knuckle racing. Getting the head and neck restraint off here, folks. And... Getting ready to climb out of the car. His 532nd career victory for the King of Boot Hill, Ronnie Adams in 11A. Ronnie Adams. Woo! Ronnie, let's talk about this one. Let's go here for these uh, fans and for the raceontexas.com cameras. Man, you got up on the wheel, both hands, both feet on this one tonight. Let's talk about this race first. We'll talk about some other stuff in a moment. What a race car you had here. This Bob Pierce car was absolutely singing up top. Did you know you're going to have to keep it up top to get this dub? 
Well, I really wasn't sure when we first went out, but uh, after I made a turn or two down there, uh, I figured that that was the place to be. And then uh, Bagley kept getting up beside me, coming off this corner over here, and I decided that I was in the wrong place. I was running too high, so I moved down. Fortunately, I, I, I did because uh, it had started taking a little rubber. How much did you learn from the initial start of this race? You swung out a little high, wide, and handsome on the initial start. The caution came out. Did you learn anything that you didn't want to do from that original start again that helped you on that second start? Yeah, I was thinking that there was a little moisture up there. I went to honey it, and there wasn't nothing there. The car was so good in the heat. I mean, I'm sure you didn't touch this thing. I'm not sure, but uh, were you pretty confident when you set out from the green flag, from the drop of the green flag? Yeah, we changed one shot in spring uh, for the feature. Uh, but I think we'd have been good either way. Ronnie, your 50th year of racing, your most recent sanctioned, touring, or sanctioned Link Model victory came at Tracy Clay's I-30 Speedway a couple years ago. I think it'd be silly to ask you how much this means to you, but 50th year of racing, and I'm not sure how much longer you'll do this, man. 68 years old, if I'm correct. 68, and you're still out here willing it, man. You just topped some of the best regional late model drivers that have raced nationally the last several years. I mean, this has got to really mean a lot to you, man. Well, I've made a lot of laps at Boot Hill. Of course, it wasn't quite in this configuration, right. but uh, I do have a little advantage when we come here. You think so? I think so. When it, in the day and age with technology, everything's so technologically advanced. These cars have come such a long way. How much has Ronnie Adams kind of had to adapt? Like different. I'm not saying you change your driving style, but how much of these things in particular just changed over the years? Oh, you got to change every day with these dead gum late models because you just never know from one week to the next what kind of setup that you're going to be on. In a day, I guess for some guys uh, can buy parts and make them go faster. I mean, back in the day, you could go to the junkyard and pull some parts out. You come out here and, and you could kick some butt. Yeah, we built a lot of our own cars back in the day. Uh, that won't happen anymore. Yeah. Still, some of them old Viper cars that are floating around, like down in Manny, and uh, if we still range streaks, there still might be a few down here. I mean, it's still got to make you proud. Yeah, that, that's amazing because uh, some of them cars are probably 25, 30 years old. How long? I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. And and for them to still be on the racetrack, you know, is testament how strong they were. They really were. Grigsby won like 26 here back in 02 and one. I mean, they're pretty dominant. Ronnie, how long are you going to do this, man? How much longer? I mean, this has got to definitely give you about 10 or 20 more years. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. I probably got another 10 out of this one. You ain't too smart enough to quit, are you? <laughs> no, I, nobody ever accused me of that. Yeah. Hey, man, uh, it was a popular victory. I think. Oh, we have one more race, but you see all these fans standing up. We love you here, Ronnie. 50 years of racing. We appreciate everything you've contributed to this great sport. Thanks. You're in the Hall of Fame for a reason, man. The King of Boot Hill for a reason. Congratulations. Final thing, let's hear about the folks who help you out in the race car. Thanks a lot. Uh, of course, we got FES, uh, First Environmental Safety Services. Uh, we got uh, Luigi Restaurant. We got Flynn Racing. Uh, we got Advanced Racing Suspensions. Uh, That's about it. Yeah, Tipton's Service Center uh, and Stewart and Stewart Law Firm. Well, they say when Tim McCready wins a race, all is right in the world. Here in Greenwood, Louisiana, when King Ronnie Adams wins a race, all is right in the world. Congratulations, my friend. Thank you, sir. Good up for him, folks. The King of Boot Hill, Ronnie Adams, get the late model win tonight here at the Legendary. <laughs> Doug Vick Jr., another four. The year's the Graham, the final race of the night here at the Legendary Quarter Mile level in Greenwood. We are underway tonight. set sail here on the opening lap as they set their sights on two and head down the back straightaway for the first time of this final race of the afternoon. Mike Washburn going to roll off a of turn number four in the Pizza Rev, Arklatex, Sheet Mill and Welding sponsored Pizza Rev number 27. Washburn leads lap one. Trying to climb his way back into Victor Lane and narrow that gap for the points lead between the four of Vic Jr. and the 27. As Vic Jr. right now is mired back in the seventh or eighth position as they roll through the center point of three and off of four this time. Can't expect for the four car to be rolling through the middle part of the pack here for much longer. However, Mike just can only control what he can control and he'll do what he can to cash in on a victory tonight. Hope that the four car doesn't have a great run so he can shave some points off and hopefully knock the margin down as we head down to the home stretch of this championship title run. The battle for seconds is a good one. They're waging war right now. Benton's Josh Bauckham, a multi-time winner here this year. He has two wins on the season as Bauckham goes to work. To the inside of the forge, Jeffrey Bechet, the 505 of Humphrey there, looking at his chops.
Michael Washburn continues to work his way meticulously through lap traffic. He'll try to dispose of two of them here off a of turn number four. He will. No harm, no foul for him. He'll continue to execute the Boot Hill Speedway with flawless execution on the left on the back straightaway. Mike Washburn dominating this main event tonight. As he has to follow up Ronnie Adams going to Victor Lane of the previous race. But Mike Washburn. One of the good guys in the sport, there's no doubt. I think he would love to follow up a Ronnie Adams victory any any given Saturday night. As Washburn has really hit on the setup, he's hit on something tonight. He is absolutely set on kill. As right now looking through the field, it's Bechet obviously running in the second spot, who's holding back the advances of the Benton Bullet. Josh Bauckham, who still sits third fourth, is the 515 of Trent Humphrey. Fifth is the 16 of Beasley, doing battle with his good friend and the current point leader, non-time winner of Doug Vick Jr. So right now, Washburn in a good spot to shave some points off. Uh, the advantage that the four has coming into this event of the caution flag will wave. And Once again on this restart, Mike Washburn has separated himself and put a sizable advantage between him at second place. Barring a catastrophe or a mechanical failure, it appears that Mike has this one in the in the bag, that's for sure. It's in the shopping cart. He'll head down the back straight to dispose of the eight of Ben Smiley and throw him back down another lap as they continue to wage war for a second. The stand of the hourglass is ticking away as the white flag will be coming out this time by. One more quarter mile trip around the legendary racetrack here since 1973, the home of the Louisiana State Dirt Track Championship. Mike Washburn will set his sights on turn number three and four for the final time tonight and the final race of the night. And dominant performance, the driver of the Arklatex, She Miller running McDonald's sponsor, Pizza Rev 27. Mike Washburn gets the win at Boot Hill tonight. Washburn six double this broke back into Victor Lane the night the driver of the Pizza Rev McDonald's sponsor Arklatex Sheet Miller Welding number 27. It's Mike Washburn from Shreveport, Louisiana, climbing out of the machine. There we go. Mike Washburn, what a what a run tonight. We'll get it on this angle for the race on Texas cameras. Been trying to get on that side, but <laughs> nonetheless, man, I, this car I think is as good as it's been all year, man. I mean, it dominated from the drop of the green and the heat. Um, and this is a great points night for you. I mean, you come out with this victory. I think Doug Vick ended up fifth or sixth, I think. So he definitely shaved into that margin. Yeah, the car was good tonight. We finally just broke down, bought some new tires. <laughs> it's got to, yeah, it's got to make you feel pretty good though to know that you're right here in the thick of things. You think you just, uh, think you came in 40 points out of the lead tonight. And I think, I mean, you say, you come out here and you race. You know, the points, the points fall where they may. I know how you race, Mike. But nonetheless, I know that you still have a hat into the ring here and coming down to the final stretch here after Doug's been very good this year. You've been equally as impressive. Just don't have all the wins to show for it. But this is your fifth of the year. But to know that you're right there in the mix has got to be definitely a feather in the cap. Yeah, it's it's fun. I come out here to have fun every Saturday night, win, lose, or draw. 
It's got to make them sweeter too, man. Whenever you face some of that bad luck, I you know you had such a good car, and you know it's just what what can you do differently? You show up here, you race the you try to race the same, and come out here and execute every week. And sometimes you execute, but sometimes bad luck strikes, doesn't it? Yes, sir. And how about our heat race tonight with me and yes. Doug and Trent and Robert? It's, it was Murderer's Row. Yes, yes, it was. <laughs> yes, sir. Let's uh, let's hear about all the great folks that help you out, man. I know you got some great partners on this twenty-seven car. Uh, thank my wife Pam first. Architect Sheet Metal. Pizza Reb, Connie's Hideaway, McDonald's, Chris Gorbert for coming on board and helping me a lot, and of course, BJ Cook and Scott Young. And uh, follow up, Ronnie Adams getting a win tonight. That's pretty cool to see Ronnie get a win, isn't it? even though you're probably in the staging area. No, I watched about 20 laps of it. It was pretty awesome. Can you race through your 68? Yes, sir. I know you can. That's right, because you kick cancer's tail, you're going to be out here for some time. Congratulations to you, Mike. You earned this one tonight, man. You dominated. Thank you, Zach. Get up for him. Thank you, fans, and thank you, Ricky and Tim, for an awesome racetrack. It was an awesome racetrack. Give it up for him, ladies and gentlemen, from Shreveport, your final victory of the night. Mike Washburn from Shreveport scores the Pro Mod win.